F, State of Georgia Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia Agreement for Funding of Prosecution-Based BOCA Program State Personnel Program. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. This, this is not a new program. This is a continuation of a program that we've been involved with, I think, since 1998. It started under Attorney General Ed Lease and the Reagan administration, but they were concerned that, that the criminal justice system did not give enough attention to victims of crime. And so uh, this voter grant, the federal money comes down to the state and the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for that. That federal money comes from fines imposed on criminal cases. There's no taxpayer generated dollars included in that. It is funneled down to the, the state and then the state agency funnels it out to subgrantees. Historically, the individual prosecutor offices around the state have been the subgrantees and we've had to handle all the paperwork. This year, we went to the CJCZ and the other's office and said, look, why don't you just let the Prosecutor Attorney's Council, which is the administrative part of the district attorneys, let them be the subgrantee for the voter grant and then let them be responsible for working out with all the DAs in the state. So what this does, it simply, it, it, it raises, it, it lifts the administrative burden off of the DAs. It puts it over the package. And there's no new money involved in this. There are no new people involved with this. There are no pay raises involved with this. This is just maintaining what we've got, the status quo. It just lifts some administrative burdens off of us and put it on there. It allows us to spend more time on direct efforts. Okay. We have any questions for Mr. Miller? I have a question. <clears throat> I see in our uh, Exhibit B where we have the federal funds and the local match. Does this come out of your budget, the uh, district attorney's budget. Yes, and, and again, even on the on the local match, this comes out of my budget, and it comes out of five percent add on the criminal cases. So even the local match is not coming from the taxpayers; having to go in their pocket. This is this program is completely funded the way we do it in our office, with money that, with fines that are assessed at the federal level and in, in the courts so the locally. The criminals who are who are cause of the demand for the victim services are the ones paying for this program. I, and I, I commit it to you, it's one of the best one of programs in the state. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, I see we got victim advocate, Merlin Register, uh -huh. uh, Karen Ambrose, Litton, and Gwen Williams. They're all attorneys. No, no, these are victim advocates. When, uh, when a case comes into our office, and maybe even before we get a warrant, let's say a, a violent crime occurs, and the law enforcement officers uh, contact us on serious violent crime. The victim advocates respond to the scene and they take care of the needs of the victim while law enforcement is busy trying to solve the crime. You know, it may be things like just help them provide some food or some drink, contacting the, the preacher or family members, anything they need to do. They will come into the hospital, unfortunately, you know, if they be, they'll come to the funeral homes. They will do, their only job is to look after the needs of that victim so that the law enforcement officers can work on investigate the case and so that my assistant DAs can work on getting evidence we need to present in order to, to show the case to the jury. The, the advocates, these are all advocates. Those are three out of my five advocate positions in the circuit. I noticed one of them um, it doesn't have any health insurance beside it. It just has retirement. Is, did they want health insurance or not? Anymore? Oh no, it's, uh, let's see. I think it's uh, victim advocate Karen Ambrose. You know, all of my people don't have health insurance uh, because if they've got health insurance, uh, say through a spouse, and they don't want the health insurance, I don't force them to go into that because obviously it costs us extra money. So, you know, out of the 33 employees I've got in the circuit, I would bet I'm not real sure every single one who they have and who they not have, but it's certainly available if anybody needs it. For instance, if they've got their insurance through a spouse and the spouse dies and they no longer can continue with them, we certainly open that up to them. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, as a point of clarity, that would be under the state benefit program. It would not. I just noticed I, I saw the other ones listed and, and they had health insurance beside them in an amount, but they didn't have one inside. Care. So I was well, I'm sure. assuming care does have it through yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any other discussion? All right. Here, now we call the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like so. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you all. I should have to be back with this for another five, four or five years. That's how long we Thanks, sir. Thank you.